I remember an incident that happened to me when I was a young boy that never left me. There was a troubled neighborhood kid that everyone seemed to believe or assume that he was a bad kid. You see, he wore a hoodie most of the time to cover his troubled life. Even good people have a tendency to hate on something they can't explain. Sometimes troubled kids are confused with bad kids. There's a huge difference between a troubled kid versus a bad kid. The hoodie-wearing troubled kid kept to himself most of the time. He seemed angry, so most viewed him as a troublemaker. So most viewed him as a bad person. He was a tall, slim, athletic-looking boy that had a very, very edgy attitude. And his demeanor, well, he didn't smile a lot or appear to ever be happy. Even his friends were sort of nervous around him because the troubled kid, because of the hoodie wearing kid, he didn't have a problem with fighting or confrontation. And to most that knew him, he left an imprint of uncertain danger. Well, any youngsters wearing a hoodie at 2 a.m. will breed fear and uncertainty to others. Right or wrong, that's a fact. People are often intimidated of the unknown. Jeff was a kid such as this. Not much was known about Jeff, the troubled kid, Jeff, the hoodie wearing kid, but soon all that would change. Jeff would change the world. Well, one summer a group of boys took a trip to the river to play in the swim. I believe the trip was a reward for a successful baseball season. All the boys were playing, swinging, swimming, and having so much fun. It was a beautiful day. The sun seemed to be smiling at the clouds, and the birds were chirping at the trees, and the boys were laughing and smiling at the daylight. A little distance up the river, just a few miles, danger was lurking. The river itself was a creation of the lake's dam. On the outside of the lake was a huge cement dam that appeared to be a cement grave for the floodgates. I always noticed that dam because it seemed to be a perfect riding surface for crazy, insane skateboarders. Yep, I admit, I proudly used to be one. The floodgates would open from time to time to lower the water level of the lake. Most of the time, the floodgates were closed which provided great fishing spots for the local fishermen. But before the floodgates would open, a warning siren would sound for an extended period of time to warn those using the river for fishing or swimming that the water would soon be released to lower the lake's water level. Well, the boys were swimming and having fun a couple of miles down the river away from the floodgates. The sirens began screaming at the clear blue sky the boys were having so much fun that their ears did not hear the warning siren. As the water began racing down the river, at first the rising currents made the swim and the boys more excited. Then Mr. Panic stepped in to warn them to get out of the water. As the boys struggled to swim to shore, the turbulent rambling currents began to sweep most of the boys further down river. The river was too strong and too dangerous for the boys to withstand. Most of the boys were able to get out of the river safely, except for the kid whose name was Carrie. Carrie was one of the boys that could not escape the muscle of the rushing water. Everyone else was out of the water except for Carrie. As the boys ran along the riverbank searching, searching the waters for Carrie, Carrie then resurfaced. He resurfaced enough to see him briefly. Splash, Jeff. The hoodie-wearing trouble kid immediately jumped into the water without hesitation to save Carrie. As Jeff swam towards Carrie, Carrie went under for the second time. Jeff chased Carrie through the swift currents under the water to grab him. I hope y'all hear me today. Jeff was able to grab Carrie only by the hair on his head as he scrambled up to the rumbling surface. Carrie panicked. Carrie panicked because of the strong grip to his head and the rushing water that was entering his throat. Carrie began to fight for his life. Carrie continued to fight. Carrie 
fought for his life. Kerry pushed up, he pushed down, and he pushed away. Kerry panicked and began to scratch and claw the arms of Jeff. Jeff, his rescuer. Kerry's fingernails dug deep into the rescuer's arm. Still, Jeff refused to let go. Jeff refused to let go of Kerry. Moments later, both boys went under the raging current for a third time. Then, a few seconds later, both Jeff and Kerry appeared again for a brief and final moment, as if to say goodbye, and then both were swept away to a better swimming hole, the swimming hole that I call the river of everlasting life. I will never forget Jeff or Kerry and the sacrifice that Jeff made for Kerry. I hope to see him again and to be a better friend. You see, I had nightmares for years dreaming about the tragic moment that Jeff and Kerry went away. Jeff was the type of kid that not many people would have a lot of good things to say. But how many of those judgmental people would have made the ultimate sacrifice that Jeff made for Kerry? Don't hate on something that you can't explain. After his death, everyone began to understand Jeff's unfortunate life. He was a misunderstood kid. He was a frustrated kid. He was troubled with great character. Jeff faced unfair criticism from his elders, from the neighborhood, from his teachers. He had unbelievable odds stacked against him. That inner turmoil pitted against his unrecognizable courage and his misunderstood compassion was bravery. His misunderstood compassion and bravery was the biggest tragedy in the river that day. We fell that young man wearing the hoodie. He didn't fail us. Jeff and Kerry were sent to us to teach us the ultimate lessons of life. So when I ask you what does a hero look like, the faces of many people should come to your mind. I think of many people, my grandmother, my mother. I think of my wife, Dr. King, President Kennedy, Muhammad Ali, President Obama. I think of many people. You see, there are many people that come to my mind. But I want to tell you, I remind you that heroes sometimes have flaws. Heroes have courage. And heroes sometimes are required to jump in first. Jeff and Kerry are heroes. Kerry taught us to fight for his life and to give it your best shot. Kerry's spirit lives in our hearts still today. Jeff taught us to be unafraid of making the ultimate sacrifice for others. Jeff's spirit lives forever in the new heroes of the world. You get what you give in life. Jeff gave his life and then he gained eternal life. I'm better today because I was in the struggle yesterday. We've lost some loved ones, but we're here to represent those that are lost. We're here to represent those that love us. Because of them that love us, we will not get caught up in silliness or stupidity. We must be focused this year. I'm washed anew. What does a hero look like? A hero looks like you. I remember the story of the misunderstood boy. A boy in a hoodie that gave his life to save a life. As another boy was drowning in the river, everyone was standing around waiting for someone to save the drowning kid. While others hesitated, the troubled boy, the hoodie wearing boy, the misunderstood boy dove into the raging water without fear. You get what you give in life. Where did his bravery come from? Maybe it was from the 28 hours of labor his single parent mother went through to deliver him into the world. The struggle that delivered him into the world was the key to his bravery. Did his mother plant in him the courage? Did she plant in him the gift of becoming a hero? Did she plant in him his determination to hold on to save the drowning kid without ever letting go? Her sacrifice at his birth was for his sacrifice that day. His mother's sacrifice was the life jacket that he needed to swim into the river of everlasting life, the world of eternity. Because of his sacrifice to save someone else's life, he became the man that she planted in him. His purpose was served. Question, what's your purpose today? What's your sacrifice today? What's planted in you? We must look inside ourselves to see if we can find someone's sacrifice. We must look inside ourselves to see if we can find someone's courage, someone's bravery. We must look inside to see if we can find someone we can trust anytime, anywhere, and anyhow. There are no excuses for you. Your life is not the fault of anyone. Your life is a path of improving you and a path of where you want to go. Just say this today, I have the tools, I have the determination, and I have my teachers, my family, and my neighborhood on my side. And if not, so what? No excuses produces. I understand there are dangers out there sending messages of doubt, sending messages of despair. 
and sending messages of insecurity. But you know what? Someone has already paid for you. You know who he is. All you need to do is believe. You should believe in him and you should believe in you. Believe that starting today that you're going to be the strongest that you've ever been. You will be the most confident that you've ever been and you will be the safest that you've ever been in your life. Today, you should toss out the trash, toss out the excuses, and toss out the fear of the unknown. Today, the unknown is your partner for life. Believe and whisper this in your heart. I found my belief and it lives within me. You can't see it, but I can feel it. You can't feel it, but I can touch it. You can't steal it because I own it. Temple, Texas, are you ready? San Antonio, are you ready? Texas, are you ready? America, you better get ready. Go tell mama, go tell your granny, go tell your family. Today, I'm finally ready. Today, change has come. I'm a victory today. This year, victory is mine. This is a year of change. Now shut up and get busy. Your time is now. This is your life. Follow your dreams. Now it's time for you to go. Texas. Temple, Texas, right here. Go find your dreams. God bless you today. And I'll talk to you later. Amen.